Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome back to my channel. It is me, Ebony Evans, and I am so grateful to be here with you guys. God is so good. Um, this is a highly anticipated video. I am ready to share everything that God did for me within this last four months. And I am completely blown away by my father, by my Abba, by the love of my life. Um, so please get your popcorn, um, get your little snacks. And stay tuned as we dive deep in today's topic. But before we start, let's start out with prayer. Precious Holy Spirit, precious Father, we come to you right now. We do not take your teachings lightly. We know that your word produces life. We know that your word is living we understand that there is power in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, I pray that you bless me in this video to execute this message to the best of, of not my ability, but to the Holy Spirit's ability, which is above all things. Father God, I ask that you just go before me. Bless this video to be an edification to somebody bless this video to encourage them to pursue your presence even the more father god we love you and we praise your holy name for you are the only one that is worthy for you are the only one that will deserve the that deserves the praise for you are the only one that will get the praise out of me so father god i ask that you touch every single listener every single viewer and you bless them mightily right now under the sound of my voice in Jesus precious name we pray amen all right so this is in this is a highly anticipated video i've been telling y'all i was going to do this video lord the blessings just been happening so fast i have not even been able to keep up so god had to send me down I'm like look you need to do this video so i'm like okay lord here i am <laughs> all right so Fasting, how I divinely lost weight. And not only that, how everything that I prayed for, as it aligned with God's will, he blessed it to he gave it to me and he blessed it triple, quadruple, more than I could have ever asked or thought. So the Lord is faithful. So this video is about how I divinely how I fasted and prayed for about three months straight. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you what the Lord gave me, what the Holy Spirit gave me. He gave me divine strategy and he taught me that, um, that was a season for me to go through what I went through. And it was for, it was a season for me to discipline myself through fasting and praying, praying and fasting, because I truly believe that there should not be one without the other. If you are going to fast, you need to pray. OK, you can pray to just pray. You don't have to fast. But I truly believe when you are fasting and you are disciplining your flesh to bow down to the spirit of the living God, you need to pray. OK, and we're going to dive deep into that. So how I divinely lost weight was through prayer and fasting. All right. Um, I've been through a lot in 2020. And in due time, when the Lord leads me to share you actual details, I will. But up until then, I have to be obedient. But I went through something that was very dramatic and it was very hard. I went through something where I literally had to come to an end of myself. I went through something where um, I was battling something for six years and the Lord finally um, step. Well, I'm not going to say finally, because he kept giving me opportunity to do it. But in my own power, I did not have the strength. And so the Lord had to step in and allow some very horrible things to happen. But we know the scripture, Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And so the Lord allowed some things to happen. He allowed some things to um, um, to to take place in my life 
last year where it it literally turned my world upside down. And I knew that the Lord wanted me to surrender and I knew he was calling me to a deeper level of consecration. And so with that, I had to be obedient and I was charting territory I never would have thought in a million years. I was seeing things and experiencing things that I never thought would have ever had happened to me. But the Lord was with me the entire time. And so I was in a place of hurt. I was in a place of abandonment. I was in a place of anger. I was in a place of distrust. I was in a place of of um, heartbrokenness. My heart was broken from what had happened to me. I was completely blown away. I was com- I had so many questions for the Lord. Me and God like this. But I was angry at God. I I didn't understand God. And when I say angry, I was not, of course, cursing God. But I just was like, God, why? Why, Lord? Why? Why did this happen to me after all that I've been through? So I had so many frustrations and I cried out to God. So right after, um, right when that season started where the Lord wanted me to consecrate myself for three months, I cried myself to sleep for three, not three months. Lord have mercy for three weeks. I cried myself to sleep three weeks where I, it was just me, you know, it was just me and God and I was questioning him. I didn't understand why he allowed this to happen, but something deep inside of me knew that God was going to get the glory in my life in spite of. He was going to get the glory in my life in spite of somebody got to catch that in a spirit. So, so often we are so blindsided by what happens to us that we don't even realize that God is going to get the glory in this in spite of what happened to you, in spite of what 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 you are dealing with. The Lord is going to get the glory. And so. For three weeks, I cried myself to sleep like till pillows soaked. OK. And after that third week, the Lord was like, OK, you know, you cried. He said, but now it's, it's time for you to go to war. You got to go to war in the spirit. And the Lord told me specifically what I need to pray for. And he he told me for a humble spirit. He told me for vindication He told me for justice and he told me um, to pray and ask him how to show him, to show me how to love my enemies. And so I did. And so this was a very, very lonely season. Very lonely, very lonely. Friends wasn't there. My loved ones wasn't there. It was very lonely. And it did not take long for me to see that that is exactly the way the Lord intended it to be, because the Lord was trying to get something through to me. So while I was really focused on what happened to me, that was the Lord's doing of getting something through to me, something heavenly, something divine, something supernatural. And so that's when the Lord led me to fast. And he said, What you need from me and what he said and what I desire for you, you are only going to be able to attain it through prayer and fasting. And it was not a coincidence because nothing is a coincidence with God. It was not a coincidence when he led me to the scripture in Matthew when um, it was a a boy's father and his son was possessed by a demon and this demon used to throw him into convulsions and everything. And this demon was very violent. The man went to the disciples and asked them to cast it out. They couldn't cast the demon out. Now, remember the disciples at this point, traveling with Jesus, casting out demons, learning from the savior, him savior himself, learning from the Messiah. They are literally watching supernatural miracles up close and personal and everything. So they have had some experience under their belt when it came to casting out demons and they actually casted out demons successfully. But this one in particular, 
The Bible says they could not do. And so when Jesus addressed them, he said, ye of little faith. Like this perverse nation, this you, you have no faith. And so the man came to Jesus and was like, look, Jesus, I went to your disciples and I tried to get them to cast this demon out of my son and they could not do it. And that's when Jesus addressed the disciples and said, oh, ye of little faith. And then Jesus, of course, casted out the demon. The disciples came to Jesus in private and they asked him, they said, Jesus, Savior, why couldn't we cast the demon out? And Jesus told them that this kind only comes out through prayer and fasting. Now, back in the day, I thought they were, he was saying that in order for this demon to come out, you had to pray and fast. But in reality, Jesus was telling them that when you pray, Bobo said that it said Bashata ya that it is said. Y'all, I feel the <laughs> I feel the presence of the Lord so strong. Like, no, I am not kidding you. I just felt the woof of his spirit. I put this on everything. Listen to me. When you pray and when you fast, when you combine the two together, what happens is your faith in you begins to rise. So the reason why the disciples could not cast out the demon is because they did not have the faith to do it. See, when God is leading you to fast and pray, that means that he wants to do something supernatural through you. He wants you to be a miracle. He wants you to be a vessel unto the world to say, look at what the Lord has done for me in my life. So when the Lord told them that this kind only comes out through prayer and fasting, he was saying it is time for you to get on your knees. It is time for you to go into your prayer closet. It is time for you to put up some food because what I need you to do is going to take faith in order for you to attain it. And you need the faith in order to see it manifest. And so God said this kind only comes out through prayer and fasting. God needed them to pray and fast and spend time in the spirit realm so it could build their faith and what I was going through I knew that was nothing but confirmation of the Holy Spirit telling me Ebony what you need from me it is such a miracle that it take others five years ten years to see he says but you know me you know me as a healer you know me as a deliverer. You know me as a friend. You know me as a father. He says, so it is time for you to go into a season of fasting and praying. And it is time for you to allow me, the Holy Spirit, to build up your faith. So when I tell you I'm going to do something, you can actually believe it and walk in the power of my faith. Walk in the power of your faith and know that your God is going to deliver you. And when I tell y'all I needed a miracle, I needed to see God move in my life like never before. And let me remind you, I've seen the miracles of God. I've seen him make a way out of no way. I've seen him split uh, red seas in my life. I, I've seen him deliver me. I've seen it all. But this kind, the Lord said, let me tell you something, Ebony, this kind of deliverance is only going to come through through prayer and fasting because the Lord was telling me you getting ready to see things <laughs> you getting ready to go into the spirit realm you get and you need the faith you need the faith in me in order to believe the promises that I have bestowed upon your life. Yeah, So the Lord put me in a season of isolation, abandonment. People turned their backs on me. I saw people choose true colors for who they were. I saw a demon face to face. When I say face to face, I saw how the demon looked and everything. The Lord showed me that he's getting ready to take me out of this earthly realm. And I'm getting ready to go into the spirit realm because I had to fast and pray for miracles 
to happen in my life, for the promise of God to make his way to the forefront of my life. I said, God is not a liar. God is not a man that he shall lie. So I had to get myself in divine alignment and I had to be obedient to prayer and fasting so God could build up my faith in him. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. And so I started to fast and pray and it was, it was a very, how can I put it, Lord? It was a season where everything it went, let me tell you, it got worse before it got better. It got worse before it got better. It got to the point where I was just surrounded by problem after problem after problem after problem. Problems in my personal life, problems on a job, problems in my family, problems in my marriage, problems everywhere that I was dealing with. And the Lord, and it got to the point where I literally cried out to God. And I said, Lord, I said, I am surrounded by problems. I said, Lord, can you just give, give me a break? And he said, Ebony, the break, he said, Ebony, the break is in how you respond. He said, the break is in how you respond. And that's when he started teaching me that everything that is up against me, I have to go into the heavenlies and demand justice and demand the power of God and demand the blessings of my Lord and demand that his hand is fighting for me, no matter how it feels, no matter how it looks. So in that season of, of fasting and praying, I did it for three months. It started in October. The Lord told me that he wanted me to fast and pray for October, November and December. And then when I was do I was doing it for about three weeks by myself. And towards the end of October, the Lord said, I want you to do a corporate fast. For October, November and December, he says, because of the people that I have aligned to your ministry, to, to, to the ministry um, that I've placed you in are dealing with similar things. So the Lord was using me as a mouthpiece to speak into other people's lives and to get them in divine alignment. And so I knew that this was bigger than me. Even though I, I saw things that I never saw before, even though I was facing the biggest battle of my life yet in all of my 30 years, I've seen the devil rise up against me. I seen what he could do and I was blown away. I was. And so the Lord was like, but you're not the only one that's dealing with this. The Lord said, there are other people that I have attached to your ministry that I want you to get in. I want you to be a mouthpiece, a vessel to help them get into alignment. And so I start uh, corporate fasting. And so every week I fasted for at least two to three days and I did dry fasting. That means I did absolutely no food. I only did water. And what I was doing during that fast, I got up, went to work, you know, every morning before work, I got up and I prayed on the way to work. I'm praying in the spirit. I'm worshiping after work. I made time to wear. And at this point, I'm completely off of social media. OK, like it was deleted off my phone and everything. And so. By the time I got home, I probably took a nap. After that nap, I woke up and I gave God about an hour and 30 minutes of just praying and worshiping. Then I gave God another 30 minutes of praying in the spirit. I did this every day, even the days that I was not fasting. I only fasted two to three days um, throughout the week. But every day I sought his presence presence every day I sought the Lord every day I went to I, I went into the throne room of grace and mercy every day I set aside time to go and see my father face to face every day I made sure that I had a block time where this time could not be interrupted I had to speak to my father I had to worship I had to cry I had to read I had to seek his face and so I did that for three months and so um, what the Lord started to do, and let me just say this, I've been struggling with my weight um, for the last two, about the last three years where I just was like gaining weight and I wasn't able to lose it. And so even though I knew in the back of my mind that I was going to lose weight, 
I was not just fasting to lose weight. I was fasting and praying because I needed God to break through in me. I needed to be delivered from some things. I needed God to build up my faith in what he was promising me so I could actually believe it. So even though in the back of my mind, I knew I was going to lose weight. And to me, that was just a bonus. I needed to pray and fast for self-deliverance. I needed to pray and fast so the Lord could build my faith. Okay. So if you are aiming to fast, let it be for deliverance. Let it be so the Lord can bring some clarity unto you. Let it be because of something that you want to see change in you for God's glory. Okay. The weight going trust and believe, baby, the weight is going to fall off. It is. Okay. And so when I was fasting, that was two to three days after I broke the fast, the Lord was basically renewing my mind in, in nutrition. So I didn't, when I broke, when I broke the fast, I didn't just go into, Oh, I'm about to get me a fat burger and I'm about to eat good. And I'm about to get a pizza. No, it's like the Holy spirit was reprogramming my mind. And I started to do research. So after you break fast, you cannot eat things like that. It will mess your stomach up. You had to eat vegetables. You had to eat fruits. You smoothies were good. Juicing was good. And so what the Holy Spirit was doing was teaching me how to really take care, take better care of my body. And so after every fast, I started to adopt new ways of eating. And so at that point, my desire for burgers and French fries and pizza just slowly but surely started to leave my mind. I got into a mindset of I'm breaking this fast so I need to eat healthy because I don't want to mess my body up. And it's like my taste buds just started to crave healthy things. And I started discovering healthy things that were tasty and good and healthy things that be became guilty pleasures. But it wasn't guilty pleasures because it was actually healthy. You know, so the Lord started to even reprogram the way I thought about food. It, I mean, it, he just really started to blow my mind. And so the Lord showed me that, Ebony, I'm doing a transformation in you from the inside out. The reality is this. God don't care nothing about the outside. It's us who are so consumed as humans with how we look, our appearance and everything else. God does want us to be healthy because he says that our bodies are temples that house the Holy Spirit. It is not our own. So we do supposed to use wisdom. However, God is not concerned about how we look. He's concerned about the inward parts. He's he's concerned about our hearts. How do our hearts look? Are we really praying for our enemies? Are we really learning how to forgive? Are we really learning that we got to um, let God cast some things out of us that do not please him? That's what the Lord is concerned about. So during this prayer and fasting season that the Lord had me to encounter, he was just showing me that there is an inward transformation that is happening in me. The way I was responding was changing. The way I was reacting was changing. The way I was maturing was changing. I wasn't maturing at a slow rate. I was maturing fast because I spent more time in the spirit than what I did on earth. <laughs> Y'all better hear me. Y'all need to hear me. I said, Everything was divinely changing in me because I was spending more time in the spirit than what I was doing on earth. Do you know how powerful that is? To get to get your place in such a divine alignment where you are literally in the spirit realm more than you are here on earth. That's where I was because I was believing in God for miracles that only he could do. I was believing in God for promises that only he could keep. I was believing in God for supernatural doors to open that only his righteous hand could do. So I had to make sure that I was really spending time in the spirit more time than I ever have in my life. So when I fasted, I prayed, I worshiped, I prophesied, 
I surrendered for deliverance because I knew that the Lord allowed these this this season to happen for me to get delivered from some things. And I got delivered from unforgiveness. I got delivered from so many other things where the Lord was just breaking chains off of my mind and off of my heart. See, a diet changes the way you look. A fast changes the way you see. So God begins to break off chains and break off of a bondage mindset. See, some of y'all don't even know that you really struggling with unforgiveness. Some of y'all don't even realize yet that you really um, still walking in the bondage and fear of men. But as you fast and pray, something is divinely released on the inside of you where the power of God is unleashed and it starts to break off chains and bondage now you're seeing things the way God sees it now you're you're having new revelation that that even generations before you never could even come across because they were so blinded by their own their own perceptions and their own realities See, when you fast and pray, it opens up your eyes and it gives you heavenly perspective and you're able to understand and you're able to have heavenly clarity and you're able to assess things for what they really are. And you understand what's happening in the supernatural. And that's when the Lord dropped the nugget and told me the importance of praying in the spirit. That's when I start noticing everything. And let me tell you this, every a book in a Bible I was reading, every scripture, every chapter that the Lord was leading me to read. I put this on everything I love. I was in divine alignment like I've never seen before. It was blowing my mind. God was literally giving me promise after promise, instruction after instruction. And when I tell you, I was just watching it happen because I was exactly where I needed to be. Even in the midst of my hurt, pain, and abandonment, I saw God's face. Y'all, my camera done died. I mean, it didn't die, but... My camera didn't die, but the bad... I mean, the, um, the disc is full, okay? But I... The Lord started to show me how to pray in the Spirit. And what that did, y'all, it blew my mind. It blew my mind because what I learned was praying in the spirit is Jesus himself praying through you. And what Jesus does is pray the perfect prayer. And he's not just praying the prayer you will pray. Lord, bless me. Lord, help me. Bless, show me. Lord, do all this stuff, which is nothing wrong. But sometimes our prayers tend to be selfish and we only think about ourselves. But when Jesus, the Holy Spirit, prays through us, we are praying for the world. We're praying for people we have never met and probably people we will never meet on the other side of the world. We are praying for supernatural and divine alignment through God's spirit. We are praying for restoration. We are praying for souls to be saved. We are praying to see God move mountains that only he can do. To see God heal the blind and heal the sick. To see the dead raised. To see people that, um, that were once living in sin and horrible, horrific things to now see the light of Jesus Christ. See, when you pray in the spirit, that's when the Holy Spirit is praying through you and is praying the perfect prayer. And don't you know that Satan don't know a darn word that you are saying? Cause he can't understand it. It is a secret language. And when I will pray in the spirit, I will feel the heaviness and, and not just heaviness. I, sometimes a lot of times I will feel joy. A lot of times I will feel heaviness, but it will be emotion that will just overtake me. And I'm like, oh, bo, bo, se, de, 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 se, kora, ya, and what this began to do was build my faith even more. So this season of fasting and praying, y'all, blew my mind. Do you hear me? It blew my mind. Um, so when it was all said and done, everything that the Lord promised me, he did it and he went above and beyond. And I'm still just in awe of my Savior. I, like I literally could cry right now because it's... I fell in love with him all over again and even deeper. 
when I went through this season of fasting and praying, it brought me to think about heaven more than I ever have in my life because I saw him. I saw Jesus. I saw him face to face. I saw him with me. I saw him walking with me. I saw him talking with me. I was never alone, even though I felt alone. He was with me. I saw him. I was with him. He was with me. I cried to him. I called on him and he blew my mind. So if anything, this season was so crucial and vital for me because I saw Jesus for who he was, you know, and, and the Lord kept having me to focus on Hebrews 12, too. And if I could sum up what this season was for me, it was that because the whole purpose of this season, the Lord wanted me to fix my eyes on Jesus. And Hebrews 12, 12, 2 says. Um, Unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated, seated at the right hand throne of God. And what that scripture said to me was in every season, whether you're happy, sad, whether you're you're um, content or whether you're waiting on a promise from God, you have to learn how to fix your eyes on Jesus. You have to learn to behold the beauty of Jesus. You have to learn how to recognize him for who he is. And as you fix your eyes on Jesus, everything has no other option but to fall into place and to fall into divine alignment. And there will be favor upon your life. So I saw my savior up close and personal and I don't regret anything that I went through as hard as it was. As 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 devastating as things was, I don't regret anything because I saw him face to face um, and it was beautiful, you know, and I learned the importance of praying in the spirit. And I saw the evidence of praying in the spirit where I saw things to supernaturally just happen instantly like it, it was and then the I was so in the spirit that the Lord was literally telling me when things was going to happen and how they were going to happen y'all God was blowing my mind I told y'all he I was spending more time in the spirit than what I was on earth I'm telling you And so when it was all said and done, the reason of the fast and praying was not to lose weight, but it was a bonus. I lost over 40. No, I lost about 37 pounds, almost 40 pounds um, from those three months of praying and fasting. And when I look back, it did not take long at all. And it just started happening and the weight just started to um, drip off. <laughs> and so now um, I, I eat things in moderation and I have fun with what I, with what I eat. I understand my body and I understand that bread is not something that I need to eat every day. You know, bread is a, a luxury for me. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. Bread is a luxury for me. So I will only have breads on, you know, on, on family holidays and things like that. But I am learning the importance of eating healthier and why juicing is good and why smoothies is good and, and, and why I should not be eating fried foods every day. I was dang near having heartburn before, you know, this season happened. And so the Lord was really saving my life and showing me and teaching me and, and, and blessed me with the desire to want to be healthier. So I am so happy, y'all, but I kid you not, this season is not for the faint. It's for those who are willing to cling to Jesus, okay? This, the season of fasting and praying is, is for those who are willing to cling to Jesus, okay? All right, y'all, I love y'all. I might have to split this video up in two parts. 
I got so many announcements coming. Trust me, you do not want to miss out. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel. Make sure that you are subscribed to my email list because I'm getting ready to drop some things that I know it is going to edify the body of Christ. And can we just thank our father who is true, who is faithful, who teaches us, who loves us, who shows us the righteous way. He is so worthy to be praised. <laughs> All right, y'all. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Bye-bye.